Well, man has done it again. The Apollo 12 astronauts, Pete Conrad and Alan Bean, are taking a well-deserved rest right now aboard their lunar module, Intrepid, which is parked neatly on the moon's ocean of storms. Everything about the moon landing during the night was spectacularly successful, except that the color television camera, which allowed us to watch the astronauts, stopped working after a very short time. ABC science editor Jules Bergman has the full report, beginning with the sounds of the actual moon landing. He's got it made. Come on in there. 24 feet. Contact light. Roger. Copy contact. Close landing. P. Outstanding. Man. Astronaut on. Beautiful. He's got that. It was an astonishing pinpoint landing with Pete Conrad, Al Bean, and their onboard computer guiding Intrepid down to less than 600 feet from the Surveyor 3 spacecraft that was their major target. Hours later, Conrad emerged first to begin his four-hour-long moonwalk, and the color TV camera worked perfectly. It pictured Conrad stepping onto the moon, and true to form, Conrad kitted himself and Neil Armstrong, the first man to set foot on the moon. The first TV pictures were excellent, but as Al Bean placed the camera on a tripod, he inadvertently let too much sunlight hit the lens and the sensitive television tube burned out, leaving both mission control and millions of anxious people without a view of the astronauts as they began their real work. The two astronauts then deployed the lunar surface experiment package more than 500 feet from the limb to send back scientific data on moonquakes, the lunar magnetic, atmospheric, and ion fields. Later tonight, they emerge again in their moonwalk to examine Surveyor 3, which has been on the moon more than two and a half years. Last week at Cape Kennedy, I filmed this preview of what the astronauts hope to do with Surveyor early tomorrow. Using this full-scale mock-up of the 650-pound Surveyor spacecraft, Conrad and Bean have intensively rehearsed everything they have to do. They'll begin, after hiking over from Intrepid, by taking pictures of the original footprint left by Surveyor when it first bounced on the moon and then the second footprint it left when its motor failed to turn off and it jiggled over a few feet away. They'll then take pictures of these trenches made in the moon's soil by the tiny scooper on Surveyor, which was the first man-made device ever to sample the lunar soil. After doing that, they'll move around to this side of the Surveyor spacecraft and using bolt cutters carried aboard, Conrad will snip off this strut to give scientists back on Earth an idea of the erosion effects of a lunar environment on metal. Wiping their spacesuit gloves across this reflective thermal covering, that'll give scientists an idea of how much lunar dust has accumulated and what micrometeorite hits, if any, have taken place. They'll then move up to the solar panels that powered Surveyor and break off a piece of the glass solar cells like this. So again, the effects of meteorite dust and lunar dust on the surface can be examined. They'll put that in a package to bring back with them. Then the final act they'll do, they'll move around to the 18-pound TV camera carried aboard. Conrad will snip the electrical cables and then snip off these five struts that hold the camera. They'll then put the camera in a knapsack carried on Conrad's back and begin their hike back to the Intrepid spacecraft. This is Jules Bergman, ABC News at the Kennedy Space Center. ABC's live coverage of the mission of Apollo 12 resumes tonight at 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time and will continue until 4.30 a.m. Eastern Time. The ABC Evening News with Frank Reynolds and... Apollo 12 cost many people a few hours of sleep last night. Perhaps not as much as during Apollo 11, but it was worth it. There is another cost to the current flight, some $350 million, all of which leads to a comment. Howard? Frank, this time, national pride in a moon landing is leavened with a certain sadness. Public interest has not risen to the level that accompanied the first trip to the moon. That was inevitable. But that means that Congress, no longer pressed by public interest in space and badly pressed by expensive problems on Earth, will soon register that falling interest by reducing appropriations. After one of the great achievements of all time, the space program may face a failure. Already in anticipation of that, a beginning demoralization has appeared in the space agency. Well, there's a way to save the space program and even give it a livelier future than its past. 
That is, invite other nations to join the century's greatest adventure. Bring their scientists into it. Join together in creating an orbiting space station. Create together a reusable spaceship that can ferry men and materials to the moon and back. Colonize the moon together for scientific purposes, all sharing costs and sharing the results. Starting only with our European allies, the cost to each would not be burdensome, but the total from all would add up to enough to go forward with that adventure. This beginning the U.S. has made is too promising to be allowed to lag now. The way to keep it going is to make it international. Frank? Thank you, Howard. That's tonight's news and comment.